Hey guys, in this video we are going to be going over water as part of your A level biology. Now there are lots of facts and bits you need to remember and where water goes and what water does in this video. To help you on top of this video, you can go over to the A level biologist and look at the notes on there. There is so much stuff on there, it is absolutely amazing. And if you use the code down in the description, then your free trial will be extended to 30 days, which is loads of time to help you revise. Water is incredibly important for life on Earth. The formula for water is H2O, and that is a capital H with a subscript 2 and a capital O. That is the only thing that will get you marks in the exam. Writing it any other way is incorrect and will not get you the marks. So if you're going to use the formula, please make sure you use the right format formula and make it very clear. Now water, H2O, is a compound that is made up of one atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. The shape of water is bent. We can see it has an angle there between the two bonds for the hydrogen. So you will see it drawn like this. An individual water molecule has no overall charge, but it does have polarity. The oxygen is slightly negative and we show that by doing a little delta and negative sign and each of the hydrogens is slightly positive. And we can show that by doing a little delta plus. The delta means a partial charge, or slightly positive, or slightly negative. Partially charged positive, partially charged negative. It's this polarity, the slight charges, the partial charges on the water, that leads to having its interesting and important properties. One of the key properties is that water can undergo hydrogen bonding. Inside the compound between the oxygen and the hydrogens are strong covalent bonds. These are intramolecular bonds. A hydrogen bond is the attraction between the partial negative charge and the partial positive charge. Individually, these hydrogen bonds are weak. They are not very strong. But there are generally a large number of hydrogen bonds wherever you will come across them. And their combined overall strength is very large. These are intermolecular bonds and individually they will be weak. Water is an important metabolite. It is released in any condensation reaction like the one we're about to see here between two amino acids. They are going to lose water and a peptide bond is going to be formed releasing water away and water is used in hydrolysis reactions. Here we have two glucose monomers joined together to make a disaccharide with a glycosidic bond in the middle. Water can break that, giving us back two individual glucose monomers. Whenever you are talking about condensation or hydrolysis reactions, whenever you're drawing them out, always remember to draw on the water when it is lost, like I almost forgot to here. And water is an important reactant in a wide range of reactions as well. For example, in photosynthesis, where we have water plus carbon dioxide photosynthesizing in the chloroplast to give glucose and oxygen. Water has strong covalent intramolecular bonds and weaker intermolecular hydrogen bonds. But the large number of hydrogen bonds makes 
up for any individual weakness. The hydrogen bonding is responsible for the boiling point of water being much higher than you would expect for a molecule of this size. Similar sized compounds are a gas at room temperature, whereas water is a liquid. Lots of energy is required to overcome the hydrogen bonding and to change water from a liquid to a gas, to change water state. It is very resistant to any changes in temperature and can act as a buffer. Keeping the temperature stable and protecting against sudden temperature changes which could be harmful. The hydrogen bonding is also responsible for the surface tension in water. It means that water has a tendency towards cohesion, allowing some insects to skate on top of water, allowing droplets to form, and allowing for water to be drawn up the xylem in plants. Due to the hydrogen bonding, water has a comparatively high latent heat of vaporisation, meaning it takes a large amount of energy to turn it from a liquid into a gas. So as water evaporates, it takes lots of energy away with it. This means the evaporation of water has a cooling effect. So when we sweat, that is our body's way of cooling us down. Water is a great solvent. And we're going to look at the example of salt, NaCl, here. Since water is polar, the different parts, the slightly negative oxygen, the slightly positive hydrogen, can interact with different things. And this is important for solubility. The slightly positive hydrogens will be attracted to the Cl minus, whereas the slightly negative oxygens will be attracted to the Na plus. The result will be that the ionic lattice is slowly ripped apart from the outside one ion at a time, as individual ions form electrostatic attractions with the different parts of the water. Water can easily dissolve lots of things. Important ones are carbon dioxide and oxygen, moving them around for use in reactions. It is great at dissolving and removing waste products from reactions, such as urea. There are a few other important things you need to know about water. Water is the sort of thing that comes into lots of different areas, so these could easily be put into any answer for a question. It flows easily, meaning it can move easily up the xylem. It's incompressible, meaning it can help keep cells turgid. And it is transparent, meaning it will not block light going through anything. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.